A lot of anglers have grown pretty accustomed to side imaging at the council unit when looking at structures to find those hard soft bottom transition areas. And one thing that I've been experimenting with quite a bit this year is up on the bow. So I actually have the same side imaging transducer, a mega imaging transducer that I have on the transom on the bottom of my trolling motor and Minn Kota makes a bracket. And what that gives me up front is just a nice clean picture of hard and soft bottom areas. So off to my left, I'm looking out 60 feet, it's soft. Off to my right, I have rock, it's starting to develop. And the big thing to maintain a nice looking rock image there is when you have a little bit of forward momentum and you're keeping that transducer going pretty straight, that's when it produces those nice rock-like pictures. But I definitely have a harder return. Now we're starting to get into a harder return off to my left as well. But what that does, especially when I'm fishing a, a presentation like this, this is a, this is a hard head system with a biffle bug by Gene LaRue. It tells me where I want to be throwing that bait. That bait excels on those harder bottom areas. So side imaging isn't just for the, the council when you're searching, but you also want to have that, that information up front too. So you know where to make a cast. There we go. Way at the end of the cast. Little guy. On the old biffle bug. So what I'm gonna do is get right back out there. Cause usually if you find out where they're sitting on these rock spots, you can catch a few more. So you wanna make that exact same cast, which I'm gonna do there. Ooh, there we go. Nice fish. A little better anyways. So now, now we're in nine feet, so I'm gonna drop the shallow water anchor. Keep us right on the spot. Another little guy there, but we're starting to get something put together. All I'm doing this morning is I'm on a nice rock slash weed structure. It's got nice mixed habitat. And I'm throwing this hard head system, just a nice little swing head, football head design with a biffle bug. And I need a new one now, but we're trying to find out where the fish are at. And a real good way to do that is just to cast this thing out and reel it around and uh, find where the fish are positioned on the structure. And it's just a great way to trigger fish and the beauty of the, the hard head system as opposed to a crankbait is when you're dealing with a, a weed or a grass situation like we are up north now, I can fish this thing as fast as a crankbait across the bottom so I can cover a lot of water quick. And it fishes pretty darn weedless too. So I get the benefits of a, a bait working quickly along the bottom, triggering reaction strikes. At the same time, because of that offset worm hook behind that jig, I just don't get snagged up that bad. So it fishes clean, fishes fast, it's a great triggering system right there. So just like a crankbait, you know, I'm reeling it, sometimes they'll miss it. But the beauty is you can pause it, just like a crayfish stops when it's scurrying along periodically. The fish will just be in hot pursuit. It, it's a true reaction bait. Ooh, there we go. There's the one I was looking for. <laughs> nice pickup. Now it's just that nice dunk. You can see all that nice big single hook. Once you get them hooked, they're, they're pinned. Nice little chunk. Took off one pin pincher, but I don't think that'll matter too much. Rock there, boy, it feels good. That feels better. <laughs> right below the boat. That's another deal with this thing is just keep reeling it right till you get boat side. That's a little guy. But I mean, he was, he was basically at a 45 degree angle right below the boat and I was making good bottom contact. And you can see this head here, it's doing what it's supposed to. If you can zoom in real tight, you'll see that wear on the bottom. And that's just where I'm making good bottom contact with rock, with sand. Maybe there's a few stumps down there. And then this guy's just kind of doing that and swinging free, clear from the obstructions. And that football design actually fishes really well over the rock, it just deflects. Because I'm reeling it fast, it's scooting along in the top of the rocks. I'm not letting it get down into the individual crevices. So it's a real snag resistant system. And those fish will just get in hot pursuit of it like they will when they're tracking the crankbait. There's rock. 
That's the beauty. I can look at my side imaging there. I, I definitely have some hard stuff out there. I'm feeling it on the cast. The bait's really helping tell me what's out there. And then I'm kind of using side imaging too to help me pinpoint where I want to be making cast, where the hard bottom is. We're fishing mid late summer right now. Peak water temperatures up in the north country. And when you start hitting that, you know, mid 70s, pushing 80 degrees, bass in our natural lakes will shift out of the weed beds that oftentimes kind of get choked out a little bit. They'll get out on these rock spots, which are a little bit cooler. Bluegill and crappie will get on the clean hard bottom areas. They'll shift out of those choked out weed beds a little bit. I don't know if it's a little bit cooler, wa cooler water temperature out there. Ooh, this is a good one. Look at that guy, huh? That is what we're looking for. A little bit nicer one there. He ate it good. Huh? Solid one. They're getting a little bit bigger. Look at that hook. I'm just buried. Mm. Nice fish. This is what we came out here this morning for. Some of these guys. And so far they're liking, they're liking the weather. They're liking a jig. And what's real important with this system is a good sensitive rod. You know, I like something that has a pretty fast tip, but also comes down to a nice midsection, but you actually want a little bit of, you want a little bit of give to that tip. It's kind of like a crankbait almost, where a lot of the bites aren't just boom, you know, they're not direct contact, but rather when you're reeling that thing in, sometimes it's just kind of mush. You want that rod to load up a little bit. And when I get bit with this system, I'll actually just start reeling real fast and then sweep into the fish once that rod loads up. So once that rod loads, I can tell that, yep, that's a fish. I'm sweeping into them. You got to just swing like, like that. There we go. There's a good one there. Look at that rod. <laughs> we'll take a look at the map here in a few seconds after I get this guy in. Kind of a carbon copy of that last one. Nice. Pretty feisty in this warm water. These guys under, are under ice half the year, so they're really feeding good when you get into these peak summer months. Nice chunk. One thing that's real important with this hard head system, this little swing head creature bait, and there's a diff number of different manufacturers that make this, but just like a crank bait, you want to get set up on a good line. You know, you can fire this thing out for a long cast, but you want to make smart casts. And what I'm doing right now is I'm positioned right on a drop off. And on the top of that drop off, I have a long rock spine. So I'm just basically casting parallel down the edge of that spine where the bass seem to be positioned. They're kind of sitting on the edge of those rocks right on the top of the drop. So right there is a long cast. I'm keeping that bait basically on the edge of those rocks for about a hundred feet versus casting perpendicular to it. And you gotta figure out what your line is. Where are those fish positioned? You know, if you can shallow water anchor to maintain that same cast or use a spot lock like what we have up here on the Minn Kota trolling motor. And then look at a tree or a house and line up on the shore and just make that same repeated cast. Cause once you find out where the school is at, you gotta keep making that same cast. They're not everywhere. There's usually just a wad of bass on a very specific spot or a spot on the spot. And what we did for this particular spot, cause this lake wasn't mapped, is we just fired up Auto Chart Live and made a custom map of this spot. So that gives me that one foot contour accuracy that I'm used to on bigger bodies of water, but it gives me bottom hardness information too, which I don't have with standard mapping. So it was real easy to come out, just run a few zigzags across it, develop a, a real nice high definition map of this spot that also has hardness information so I can fish it smart. And then over time coming out here, repeat, you know, repeatedly I can figure out where the fish live on this spot, you know, by associating where I catch fish with the map. There we go. <clears throat> Let's see what I did there on the hook set. I just started speed reeling when that rod started to load up. And that's one thing with, with this hardhead system, for me anyways, is I, I kind of prefer a rod with a little bit of a tip, you know, a real nice sensitive tip that loads just like a crankbait rod, but meets a little bit stiffer midsection to drive the hook home. Cause it's kind of a weird bite. It sometimes it just feels like mush. You just start to get some weight. And then I'll, I'll check that, meaning I want to see if it's a fish and I'll reel really quick, like I would with a live bait rig for walleye fishing maybe. And when that rod loads, 
loads up, that's when I kind of jack them a little bit. So you can see this rod here, it's got that soft tip, but as I bend that, there's that tip. I like that. <clears throat> Boy, it gets nice and nice and stiff throughout this midsection here. Um, you know, and you want that when you're driving home a good, you know, three aught, four aught, you know, heavy wire offset shank hook. But you got to have a sensitive tip because the bites can be really hard and jarring. But a lot of times they're just subtle as a fish comes down and grabs it, and they might be moving forward with that bait. So. You really don't feel anything until you just keep reeling the bait and the rod starts to load. I don't know what that is, but I figure it out by just going like that. Rod loads more, set the hook, got them. And the rod I'm using today is a Megabats Orochi. This is their Extreme Mission Type F. Oh, there's a nice one, which is just perfect. Look at that bend in the rod. Nice fish, but it's sensitive. Seven foot five, so I got some I got some control of that bait on a long cast where I can still maintain good contact with the lure and the wind. And then a fast reel, you know, you want to be able to pick up that line quick. This one's a seven to, a seven to one and I got 15 pound fluoro on. Just seems like 15 pound fluoro. More than anything, obviously it's strong enough for this bait on the hook set, but the line diameter is smaller too. If I went to a 17 or a 20 pound, just that diameter, that line goes up. So I'm not able to, fish this bait as efficiently on the bottom in deep water. Because of the resistance of the line, it wants to lift that bait off the bottom. So you just try to get by with the lightest line you can, but you know, Tommy Biffle said it best. This is his, this is his baby, 15 pound floral carbon is an all around good choice. So a typical cast for me with this hard head system is just gonna be launching it out a good distance, nice long cast. And what I'm gonna do is hold my rod tip high and I like the floral carbon because it's heavy and it really transmits a good bite on the drop, that initial drop. Better than braid to me, seems like it transmits that jerk. It's almost like a sharp, you know, hit right, right down the line. There's a fish. You know, you can see that was way at the end of the cast, man. That's, a, that's way out there. But with that 15 pound floral carbon, I can feel that bite on the fall. And it doesn't have as much stretch as mono so I can still get pretty good hooks. No giants today, but boy, good action, you know? So, I mean, if you haven't tried this system up north, and you, you Southern boys know all about it, but it's a really good way to catch these bass. And you know what, they're not accustomed to this. They just haven't seen this presentation that much in the North Country across the United States. And, Tommy Biffle, back in 2016, the Angler of the Year tournament on Mille Lacs for the Elite Series, he pounded great big smallmouth with this. This is the 11 16th ounce, so that's a nice heavy head with his four and a quarter inch Biffle bug, and big smallmouth love it. Hey, you catch small ones too, so it's not just a largemouth bait. Fish is great on hard bottom areas, but I can still get by in those weedy areas. There we go, boys. There we go, yeah. There's the school of them up there. I'm gonna keep out here a ways away too. Just keep making that long cast so I don't spook the fish. Got beautiful rock on the side imaging up here. We've hit the mother load. Just not the big ones. I don't even care, I just like action. Look at that soft bottom here. Beautiful rock spine here. And that's what I'm casting parallel down. I'm just making that long cast right down that little rock ridge. It starts to drop off right here. So when I make a long cast like that, I'm just gonna let that bait sink to the bottom. I'm following the, following the bait down with my rod tip, waiting for that line to go slack, which means I'm on bottom. And then I'm just gonna drop my rod tip and I'm gonna reel it as fast as I can while maintaining bottom contact. And that's the reason we're running that 11 16th ounce head. And what I'll do periodically is just kind of stop it. If I lose contact with the bottom, I'll let it regain bottom contact. But I can tell there with that, with that rod, I mean, I'm on bottom, I'm just working it over that rock and gravel. But you can vary your retrieve, speed it up, slow it down a little bit. Basically think of it like a crayfish. You know, they're, they're speeding up and scurrying around. But in general, a good, nice, steady cadence works good. Basically treating it just like I would a crankbait.
I'll start out fan casting an area. I can cover a lot of water quickly. Once you get bit, boy, get back out there and make that exact cast. 